Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who have joined us in this webinar that we'll be speaking um, about to our, our interested parties around how we scale search inside yourself um, across enterprises. And today well, we're really fortunate to have Tatjana um, Wittig from Deutsche Telekom. And uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Alexi Dosa. I'm the global head of growth and customer success for Search Inside, or for, excuse me, for SIY Global. We recently changed names after uh, uh, some time. Um, and, and with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna just ask uh, Tatjana, if you could share a little bit about yourself and maybe introduce yourself. It's my understanding that uh, you have uh, been quite a passionate uh, supporter of these practices that we teach at Deutsche Telekom. And I'm just going to hand it over to you. Maybe you could introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Alexis. Super glad to be here. Super glad to share the story and also, you know, like introducing myself. I could introduce myself in many ways. So officially, if you would go into the Deutsche Telekom and look up for myself, you would find me in a technology and innovation department deep in the tech area and now you might have a question mark like hmm search inside yourself innovation technology what's that uh because like if i would do my second introduction i'd say i'm i would consider myself to be intrapreneur so like someone working in a big corporate uh, environment but looking you know how can i leverage my skill and contribute uh, to the company and what i discovered um uh, four years ago, as I became a um, search inside yourself teacher, that I want to bring also this into my company and it's something, you know, um, could be so valuable for people. So I just started my own journey. You know, it was not like, oh, someone gave me the job. Oh, go and find mindfulness practices. It's just something which I found so super helpful for myself. And I just gave myself the permission to say, hey, what if what if this could be available to each and every employee at DT? And fast forward, four years later, it is available to all employees of DT. And uh, I'm still in the innovation department. I'm still doing product innovation for customers, but uh, on a side business, uh, like becoming the go-to emotional intelligence person and uh, champion and rolling out mindfulness and corporate environment. Yeah, that, uh, thank you so much for, for sharing a little bit about yourself and how you really have this, this business role within the, the corporate innovation portion of Deutsche Telekom, but then there's this aspect of you having a um, tremendous amount of heart and passion for this, this ability to bring mindfulness for the specific uh, development of emotional intelligence to people within Deutsche. And uh, there, there are just so many capabilities and skills that come from that that apply not only to the work world, but to um, life itself. And uh, maybe if you don't mind, could you share a little bit about what, um, what uh, you know, allowed you to become interested in this, this work that we're doing? Mm. Well, maybe starting even a step before, you know, I started to become very interested in things like emotional intelligence, mindfulness, um, being challenged in my life quite a bit you know, because I have four kids right now they're teenagers but as I've been little it felt like you know I was juggling fireballs and a friend took me to a meditation class and somehow you know my movie which was like oh my god this is just too fast I didn't know where to start become a slow-mo so I could like see okay you know what is next what I'm doing next and this is where I discovered the power of the mindfulness technique as such and started to do my own journey but which has been a parallel to my working world right like okay I know about the power of it but I couldn't talk about it in a corporate setting right it felt like you know people would think you're wearing wool socks and drinking warm strawberry tea type of thing right yeah. and this is where I where I found Search Inside Yourself, I mean, the language, you know, to be able to share in a corporate environment about the benefits of going through this rational door in our head, using the language of, look, the neuroscience and look, the companies are doing that. And then I felt like, oh my God, now it's not just like I'm feeling the power, but I can invite others to also enjoy and utilize it for our daily work. Yeah, it's so important these points you're making because um, it's 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 often really uh, um, quite 
um, common for people to ask us here at SNIY Global about the actual logical, the, the pieces that maybe uh, people need to understand how and why these practices from a from a neuroscience perspective are changing us and in, in, in enabling us by being present to be able to develop these capacities, um, these core qualities around emotional intelligence, which then lead to um, better work environments, better interaction uh, with people and teams. And when people are asked to change, having greater skills and capacity to support the change their organizations are asking them to, to make, and also the change that we see um, quite often in our personal lives and how it all just um, enables life itself, both at work and, and, and at home. Um, so can, do you mind now, uh, Tatiana, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really curious to know, and I'm sure the audience is as well, to understand the history of SIY, Search Inside Yourself at Deutsche Telekom. Do you mind sharing a little bit of the history of how it started and then what's taken place since? Mm -hmm. So Search Inside Yourself was part of the very executive leadership training since 2017. So very exclusively only for top 150 people. And then, so it was available, leaders liked it very exclusively. And then I, after becoming teacher and feeling the calling in me like, okay, you know, what if this could be available to each and everyone? I just started, let's say, guerrilla tactic to just say, okay, let's just offer some session. Let's just recruit some people. Let's just uh, uh, invite friendly users. Let's just uh, make a lot of buzz around it. And it was 2020. That we started this journey and then yeah it has been times where i thought like okay you know things don't work but in like a large corporation it's like a marathon you know you just need to have this resilience to just stay on your topic and repeat your message over and over and then it happens that we found eventually a sponsor and then we've been able to send seven others to become teachers Teachers. And then this year we have eight other people in becoming teacher education. And by now we have more than a thousand people who have attended mm -hmm. Search Inside or Self training. So big alumni community growing within our company. And also, if you look at the numbers, 99% would recommend this training further, right? So it's in, in the beginning of training, I quite often ask, so what? like in two words, what makes you to come here, right? So what brought you here? And uh, a lot of people, like half of the people would say recommendation of my colleagues, right? So it's a little bit word of mouth, which is uh, going on and the courses are getting booked out like this. And this is great. Wow, so you covered so many points that I was hoping to ask you about. And so I'm gonna uh, maybe ask a few more questions, but first of all, 99% recommend um, this program, SIY, to their colleagues and peers, that's that's phenomenal. Um, I, uh, I have to say our our overall average um, across all of our customers that have uh, taken our survey, our NPS score is 93. So we're a little bit lower than what, what uh, Deutsche Telekom's responses, but hey, we're in the 90s. That's pretty phenomenal in and of itself. So you mentioned that the program was initially offered to executive leadership. And that says a lot that the executive leadership uh, would find enough value in what the, the outcomes and results of this program would be for them. Um, their time is extremely valuable and they have plenty of other things that they could spend their time and attention on. So that says a lot. And that um, eventually you found an executive sponsor to uh, enable more people within uh, Deutsche to, uh, to be able to take the program. So can you share with us some of the business challenges and needs potentially that this may have solved uh, in order to get the support of yeah. executive leaders and sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the major topics of a global company is uh, employee engagement, you know, because it, maybe it's different for a startup, but people who go to work for a large corporation, they're looking for security. So there are people who just do like nine to five and say, you know, I'm getting paid, tell me what to do, right? But with this attitude, you waste a lot of energy. You are not living up to your potential, which you could if everyone would lean in, right? So employee engagement is certainly one of the topics. The other one is like, 
adaptability to changes because the structures are changing quite quickly and uh, we we don't want people to just lean back for two years and be in anxiety state and panic but just appreciate the change and become fluid and saying wow okay let's see the good sides let's see the opportunity to unfold and let's become adaptive in this so this is probably one major resilience because you know uh, we've started to teach and offer this in a time where pandemic was like really a big topic right and people have been like oh my god you know how are we going to manage it and also this is an interesting fact we have been the first program to bring people together in a virtual space because as the corona started you know teams just changed to say okay let's have a meeting but there was no place for like human connection so our training was in fact a pilot to bring people People together in a virtual setup and say hey even a virtual setup we can have a trustful conversation we can help to create the hybrid working environment which is going to stay right so this is probably the major topics and also like the teaming part you know a lot of people come to our trainings and after the training they come to me and this is touching my heart like truly and i say like look you know after these two days i know the participants of this course much better than my colleagues with whom i've been working for seven years oh my wow. god you know well i think that's worth repeating so you're you're if i heard you correctly you said that people that have taken this course had um know and connect with one another uh better than than maybe if they've known somebody for seven years within the company did i get that right yeah yeah it's those types of connections that enable us to work so much more collaboratively and more effectively as teams and as leaders. Um, I, I'm also just fascinated by, um, you, you said that there's, uh, I think you said seven uh, internal teachers today teaching the program and that another eight will be taught. So you'll have a total of 15 internal teachers of our program at Deutsche Telekom. Can you talk a little bit about that too? Yeah. So the eight are still in education, so they're not teaching yet. And out of seven, um, it's quite international. And, um, you know, even our demand is bigger than we can like internally serve. So we even uh, hire from time to time external teachers to help out because um, the demand is huge, especially in, in German language. Demand is much bigger than we have expected being an international company. And uh, all of the teachers are doing it next to their normal job, right? So we don't have teachers who are like, okay, 100% of your official job is teaching. So all of us are doing it to, next to their job. And all of us are coming from different corners of this company. And I think this is what makes it so special, right? Because we can all connect to our specific challenges and needs and like speaking the language of the people in the room and also acknowledging like, all right, you know, you're in the training for two days, but we all know, let's take a minute to arrive, right? Everyone would agree, all right, minute to arrive, great, yeah? But then people say, you know what, it feels awkward to just start a meeting with silence. Okay, but let's share about it. And we understand this is, this is awkward. So we produced a little video to help people to just play this video to overcome the awkwardness, but still introduce these topics to their teams. So those types of things. Yeah, you're you're calling out one of the one of the just simple but so effective practices of a minute to arrive before you arrive and start a meeting. You, we all come with some type of experience prior to the meeting. Maybe it was um, a poor interaction with a team member, or maybe there is some challenging conversations that you 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 know you might have had with a family member, and then all of a sudden you show up in this meeting and we're carrying those thoughts and those emotions with us. So that one minute to just get settled, become present and really think about how um, how I want to show up and how might I be, you know, at my best uh, self uh, within um, within this next meeting. So it's such a powerful practice that we that we teach. Um, you, you know, I'm curious, Tatiana, do you carry, uh, do you capture metrics around um, the program and the success of the program? Are there any metrics that you can share? You mentioned employee engagement, so I'm sure that you you do an employee engagement survey occasionally. Um, are, are there other, you know, areas of you know, metrics to capture the success? Mm -hmm. So something, what we've been 
uh, capturing in the beginning, in the pilot phase, we just use the usual survey, which is available on the Silly platform. And one of the striking facts, which we found out uh, by analyzing data of 300 participants was ability to focus. Mm. So, well, I'm able to notice if my focus is distracted or not. And this is so valuable. And most of the people will say, whoa, so many polls, so many channels, I can't focus. So this is something which is super convincing for our management. Um, ability, like something in the direction, collaboration, empathy, ability to listen to the other person for their opinion without having already my own thoughts and judgments and questions, which helps the collaboration aspect. So this is the most striking factors. We're now currently working to implement it in our global survey, which is a little bit tricky, right? Because it needs to be anonymous. It only has few questions and how can we flag people who have participated Made it an SOI or not. So this would be my dream to implement it in our like usual global employee survey, because then we could clearly point out the employee engagement. For now, we can't, you know, we, we're collecting new data, which we haven't crunched yet, which is pointing toward the employee engagement. So I hope we can find some insight there. But my dream is to implement it to our global all covering surveys. And then we can say, you know, like, that's control group, people who did not participate, people who are on a waiting list, interested, and people who have participated. That would be a perfect setup. So you, once again, you just shared so much um, valuable information. So uh, one, just to finish the topic that you just uh, shared around metrics, but the, the demand, the waiting list for employees to take the program, that's a key metric in and of itself because it shows the desire, which is it sounds pretty natural based on the referrals and um, the overall response of the of the of the success of the program. So, can you share a little bit about the demand for the program? Mm, that's a good question. So <laughs> because you, in the I beginning, you correctly earlier, you had a thousand people trained so far, and now there's still yet more demand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thousand trained so far. Then we have this year another ten cohorts coming up, and due to um, Wickles Council restrictment, we can only teach cohorts up till 30 people. So, you know, we could technically teach more, but uh, those cohorts are restricted to 300. So, it'll be another 300 this year. And to be honest, um, it's a good question to see, you know, how many are on a waiting list because people sometimes don't put the name on a waiting list because they feel like if they're already five on a waiting list, it's just too much. And um, we have now stopped to just collect randomly an intranet waiting list, which just said, hey, you know, new trainings are coming up with our training platform. Just watch out for the communication, assign yourself. But we, we see how quickly the courses are getting booked out, right? We just recently, two weeks ago, announced the new cohorts for autumn. Filled up. Yeah, it's really common. Um, it's one of the experiences that I've, I've uh, had so far is that Companies, when they when they announce that they're going to teach a program, whether it's a pilot or the continuation of an existing program, the, the course generally fills up within a few days. Um, the demand that we see across to all of our customers is, is quite powerful and robust. Um, another question I have for you is around you know, challenges. What are some of the challenges have you faced and the organization faced? It's never a smooth and easy ride. To, to get to a destination. Um, sometimes there's ups and downs. Can you share some of the challenges that, uh, you, that, you, that uh, people that are listening could learn from you uh, mm. around this program? Plenty of challenges. I can write a book about challenges. <laughs> so one of obvious challenge, find a sponsor, you know, find someone who would put money into it and believing into it. Because in the beginning it was like, I would be talking to people and everyone would say, Yes, sounds good, but this is just so broad and I'm sitting on this chair, just in, which is um, responsible for innovation power, for new work, for health, but your program is covering just about everything I want to sponsor it, right? So having a general bigger purpose can sometimes become a little bit of a... Um, uh, struggle. Also, at least for us in Deutsche Telekom, Workers' Council involvement was at least very painful process for myself, not being in HR and like learning about all of this, what needs to be compliant, what needs to be set up. And um, another challenge is probably since everyone has their own job, right? You know, how do we find time as a teachers 
to stay true to our passion independently of our maybe changing leadership, changing bosses, changing projects, and really find time for this valuable work. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you're bringing up a point that we see customers as they uh, make their journey toward um, being partners with us. Over time, eventually, we've noticed that uh, companies recognize the value of having someone dedicated to leading the program where it's not just an additional interest that they have, but at some point they have people more fully dedicated. Maybe that will take place for, for Deutsche Telekom in the future, but it's such a great um, uh, you know, uh, point to capture around the value is seen clearly by having 15 people. So seven currently teaching the program, trained to teach the program, and then another eight to follow. So that shows um, some pretty pretty powerful support. Um, I'm curious, Tatiana, do you have any questions for me? I'd love to like maybe have you turn, let's turn the tables a little bit and, and if you might have a question for me about anything related to the program or me personally. Hmm. That's a good one. Um, so maybe since you're seeing many clients rolling those programs around, you know, maybe something, what is your observation, how to keep the momentum, right? right? So how to grow the community, how to enlarge this? I think it would be also a very interesting learning point for me, but maybe someone from the audience who initially started the movement and wondering, so what's next? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question, and um, it's an easy one to answer. So we we talked about how you're experiencing the employee engagement, and um, I heard you talk about workforce resilience and people's ability to adapt. Those are really common themes across all of our customers. Um, the leadership trust index, you know, people measuring trust and leadership, um, employee retention, those are all really common. Uh, organizational change management, how do you drive change? Um, you know, our, our world that we live in, particularly our work world and our personal lives too, so much is changing so fast. So many of our sponsors of other within other companies are using the program to help drive change. And one very clear area is agile transformation. We hear quite a bit around customers using our program to help enable their agile transformation and business transformation and culture transformation. Those are all really common use cases for how the program's utilized today. Another one is more effective teams. So um, by, be, by teaching people to have skills to more effectively uh, communicate with one another, uh, manage more skillfully you know, their interactions, it drives for a much more trusting team environment and the ability to manage challenges uh, in a much more skillful way. So those are probably the most common ones that come to, to, to the top of my head. Mm. Um, I, I, another question I have for you is, um, is, is you continue to, to show your heart and your passion towards this and help also to drive business initiatives forward. What, what would be some of the practical steps you would offer for someone else if they were interested in, in bringing mindfulness and the development of emotional intelligence skills to their company, um, what would you suggest? What, where would they start? How would they start? I think the first step is to identify some allies, some friendly, interested people, right? And some companies you can use intranet. So I was using just intranet and we have a platform which is called learning from experts where anyone can just offer any session on anything, right? So people offer session on Python programming, on Excel, on whatever you want. So I started just to offer courses just to become a little bit more visible around importance of emotional intelligence, right? And then you identify people who are a little bit interested in that and say, hey, what if we would offer this? Uh, would you be interested, right? And then it becomes a little bit like first a nucleus of, let's say, of our first movement and um, talking about it, right? especially in a big company, there's still so many people who find out like, oh, I just found out today. We're like, we're talking about this since three years. How come? But, you know, imagine people are not always reading newsletters and internet and all of this. So continue to talk about this topic. You know, I just set for myself a fun goal, like become, you know, if I manage to roll it out or not, it depends on so much other factors, but I just set for myself a fun goal, become go-to person around emotional intelligence, right? And 
then I was navigating like, oh, does it have to become a go-to person? Yeah, okay. You know, someone is asking for a session. Well, let's run a session. Someone is doing that. And then if you become the go-to person, right, then you can support the messages and also talking the language of your company, right? You know, like what is the biggest challenges a certain team would or certain division would um, face, you know, I think they're general overall, like silent quitting and employee engagement. But if you're able, let's say for innovation department, it's more like innovation mindset, right? Okay, you know, but then I can talk about SOI in terms of, hey, how does it help to follow people to dare more failure? How does it help to establish innovation mindset? So those type of things. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that. You know, there, we have a question from Nicolette. Uh, she's uh, attending as well, and, and she's asking if the program is suitable for fast-growing early-stage startups. And I imagine, Tatiana, since you're in the innovation space, oftentimes from a corporate innovation perspective, there are these smaller, more contained teams that are, that, that are almost emulating startups. Could you share a little bit about what your thoughts on that question and the answer to that? Mm -hmm. I think it's perfectly suited for uh, for fast growing startup companies because also there you know and I'm working I'm working with a lot of startups you know they are fully hearted super passionate and quite often overloaded quite often so focused on their topic to to evolve that they forget to connect with themselves as a humans right and I think it's a perfect starter to also align and talk about like what's your value why do you come up to work each day right and then, and then if you would have early startup members attend this, they would understand, oh, you know, one of your values is to be fair. One of your values is hospitality, right? And it just helps in a very organic and natural way to bring humans together in a space and talk about things which are forgotten quite often, like, oh, we need to deliver on this deadline and this deadline. And we forget about checking in about our human um, features and uh, this can hugely help in a young company. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I would love to comment on this as well. I, I spent some time in the corporate innovation space and just the ability to more authentically connect with people and more skillfully um, manage challenging situations that might come up um, on an interpersonal level, uh, the ability to develop that what's commonly called psychological safety and the, 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 the skills that are involved from an emotional intelligence point of view just makes for a much more cohesive, productive, collaborative team. Um, mm -hmm. The ability to hear everybody equally and the, the ability to be heard equally so that these are just um, very magical, powerful skills in any environment, but I would you know, call that out in the, in the innovation space as well. That kind, curious, open, mindset. Um, very, very powerful. So we have another question here, uh, and this is coming from LinkedIn. How, Tatiana, uh, uh, do you and your co-teachers of the program navigate balancing your your work at, Digi uh, at Deutsche Telekom and then being able to teach as well? I'm, I'm curious to hear this myself, since it's not your full-time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we generally say four teachings per year. So in a quarter would be one teaching, which you can somehow squeeze in. Some of the units in Deutsche Telekom has this 80-20 rule, which is 80, you do your normal project work, and 20 is reserved for growth, learning, and all of this. So if you have this in your segment, you can squeeze it in. Some people are just doing it, um, let's say, as an additional more or less in the free time because they believe in the power of this. Some say, you know, I'm just more efficient in my work. And uh, because I know it, it, it's the same, like if you need to pick up your kids, you're somehow more productive. And the same here, you know, if, I, if you know you need to teach the course or you're committed to teach the course, you're somehow more productive in the other ways to congest it. So for four times a year, this is what we usually do. And of course, you know, someone changes a job and things are different. It might be different, but you know, sometimes someone is teaching maybe two courses in a quarter if uh, if the schedule allows, so. Yeah, so. You, you, you've you answered a question for me that I'm gonna uh, make, make it clear for the rest of the audience. How often do you teach? And you said approximately four times a year. That when when you think about the whole the whole calendar year, that's not a lot of time investment for anybody. And um, if you're if you're passionate about you know being able to do this type of work first and then teach it as well, that it's it's really a, a um, 
um, a light load to carry, if you will. Um, I know this from my own personal point of view and experience in teaching the program while having a full-time job as, as well. So um, another question that's come in uh, from, through LinkedIn is how, how are there a thousand SIY alumni engaged? Uh, uh, you know, how are you, uh, how are these alumni engaged? Is, is there a way that they stay engaged after taking the program? This is a great question because this is in fact what makes the difference, right? It's not just about the two-day program and 20-day challenge and goodbye, it's that we're offering alumni calls uh, once in a month in English and once in a month in German, where they can come in and just uh, do for an hour, some practice, some reflection, meeting each other, like also meeting from other cohorts. And what we started to do like in a couple of last weeks, we just started to open up to say, well, it's generally for alumni, but it's also open for those who have not attended yet, but interested to see the appetizer of SOI, or also for those who feel like, you know, let's, let's pick the topic whatever empathy, and we'll be sharing about 20 minutes around empathy, they're happy to join as well. So we're coming more organic in their wake and their life as well. And we recognize the, uh, the importance of this. You know, people say like, oh, you know, I know I noted down, I need to do this and this and this, but by us offering these calls, you know, they come together, they recommit, and we'll usually do some meditation, some journaling, some little refreshments of the theory. So it's a nice mix up of uh, things. Wow. Uh, I, I just want to say just another uh, way for people to, to connect after becoming alumni. It's often that uh, a Google space or, or a Slack channel or whatever the, the internal communication channels and in, in, uh, workspaces are, that's often a way for people to stay connected. Uh, people will also create um, uh, interest groups and communities. I think you mentioned an interest group before. So those are all uh, simple, easy ways for people to stay connected. And, and I will say, um, once people take the program, they do have a, a very, um, uh, it's an experience where you do very become very connected with the people that you you uh, participate in that initial program and then you have a common language and a common way of, uh, you know, speaking around the, the, the tools and um, just there's, there's an experience that comes along with it that carries over well afterwards. After people take the program, there's a 28 day integration period as well. So to make sure that the skills that are being trained um, are embedded and, st and stay with, uh, with the attendees. So just a couple points about that. Tatiana, I want to um, thank you so much for your time, and it was such a great experience, and thank you for sharing all the knowledge and the information about what's taking place at Deutsche Telekom and how SIY, Search Inside Yourself, is being utilized. So thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for opportunity to be able to talk and for all of uh, people interested and also personally reach out. I'm happy to help out and uh, be a personal like advisor or something like this. And I'll maybe adding to this, for example, we have established a daily meditation group, right? So people can join in also after attending search inside yourself, but also just if they're coming from a different corner, but you know, this is a safe place to practice, to apply those things. Yeah, fantastic. So much, thank you so much. And, and thank you to all who have uh, taken the time to attend the webinar. And um, with that, I'll wish everybody a, a great morning, great afternoon and a great evening. Thank you everybody, take care.